Hello our LEGA Theatre community! All you honorary LEGAs out there and you newbies, thanks for joining us. Yes, you are joining us here in London at the Old Vic. To see the play A Monster Call. So stay tuned to find out two things. Why we couldn't quite agree on this and what almost led to an argument. And also to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or a leg it. Yes, hello Leggers, thank you for joining us. For those of you who are new here to our Legger Theatre community, before you go any further... To make sure you've always got your finger on the theatrical pulse. For our honest theatre reviews, news and interviews... Hit subscribe now. Hit subscribe. Leave us a comment, let us know you're there. We'd love to hear from you. And also, please hit the like button if you like what we're talking about, or even the dislike button. If you don't, yeah. Yeah, be I mean, something, don't be nothing. You're watching, so hit one of those buttons now. Um, you live your life by that mantra, be something, not nothing. <laughs> you won't do. go far wrong. Now, um, a Monster Calls, yeah. Um, before we go any further, um, thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, Michael Bergman, absolutely, this was a great recommendation. Yes, also, we listened to you. Also, we've had a few comments saying we should see this, so you know what, we're here, and if there's anything else you think that we should see, let us know down below. We can't see everything, but well, we do try. Only two people. And also, very quickly, we'll be having a Q&A at some point, so leave your comments below if there's any questions you want to ask us, Legos will address them in a video coming up. So, yes. A Monster Course. Yes, based on the best-selling novel by Patrick Ness, now adapted and directed by Sally Cookson at the Old Vic. A Monster Course follows the story of 13-year-old Connor, whose father's just moved to America, and his grandmother won't stop interfering in his and his sick mother's lives. Okay. Then, at seven minutes past midnight, a monster appears at the window. Sounds intriguing. Mm. Okay. Well, this book was previously adapted into a movie in 2016, starring Sigourney Weaver and Liam Neeson. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. No, the book I was a bestseller, but I've never, I've never okay. read it. So we're new to this. Yes, but this production has been devised entirely by its cast, which includes Matthew Tennyson in the role of Connor, who we saw playing the lead role in Salome at the RSC. Salome at the RSC, and also Hamid Animashon. Um, who was in Barbershop Chronicles at the National Theatre Amadeus as a well and Amadeus as yeah, well yeah and okay. he's playing Anton in this now runtime 2 hours 20 minutes including an interval so stick around to find out our 30 second interval breakdown and also hang around to the end to see whether we agree or disagree and how many legs we've come to the interval which means it's time for the breaker leggers 30 second interval breakdown Oh, what, what do you think? think? I'll go first. I think um, it's really connecting in only a way um, drama can. Like it's really amplifying all the key themes of, of the piece and emotionally it's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, it, we're spoiled because we see so much theatre, so there's nothing particularly new here, although if you've never seen a concept like this before, I think you'd be overwhelmed, but it's working really well for this piece. It's about storytelling and we're being told a story. We've come to the end. So, um, what did you make of A Monster Calls? It's an extraordinary piece um, you know the idea that a group of actors and artists have got in a room together taken a novel which is beloved best-selling has a film adaptation and thought how can we change this how can we tell this in a way that's not been done before and have come up with a concept like this which is very very strong is an absolute feat and it is a massive achievement for which I'm sure they're all very proud. That being <coughs> said, there are elements of the production because we've seen so much Sally Cookson now, we've seen Lestrada and Jane Eyre, this is her modus operandi and there's nothing new here in that respect. She knows, has a formula, takes inanimate objects and sort of forces the audience to use their imagination and create something different from those. They just agree with my opinion. Um, take something new and starting from those inanimate objects and force us to use our imagination and actually makes the audience work for their money. 
um, is something that I've seen. And I, in that respect, great. And if this was fresh and new, and uh, I'd never seen it before, brilliant. Uh, if not, yeah, it was, it was what I would expect. But it was good. Which is interesting because I've seen exactly the same stuff that you've seen from this creative company and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Even though I've seen it before in terms of the way this company operates, um, devising, using the cast to devise the piece in rehearsal and then almost writing the script and kind of saying, I, I, I imagine, okay guys, how are we going to show this? How are we going to do this? And it's magical. It's really nice. It, it gets the company is involved in this organic process, um, and the music then is organic and amplifies what themes the cast and the story want to tell and are trying to show. And it, it's just beautiful. It really connects in a way that. Um, I look around the audience, the audience were almost decimated. A lot of them were in pieces, you know, really moving piece. I'm, I'm trying to think, Lestrado, it was very much the end, had a real hard hitting moment. That and that's was the when punch. It that was the punch. With Jane Eyre, it was just a lovely, fluid, nice use of the stage and music. Um, with this, it's much like it had that nice flowy stuff with punches throughout because of the piece of what it is. Um, so it was almost like at the cruciendo of the work they have done so far. Uh, I think it's a really important piece, really well told. I applaud what they do in their the modus operandi, I guess, of what you say, of their storytelling. And I would happily see more and more of this stuff if this is how it is. This is inspired creativity. Story-wise and in the telling of that story is very much that Sally Cookson's previous pieces have had a love child with Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime and it's hard to not draw parallels to that because it's a story of a teenage boy who is dealing with a traumatic experience and you are following his story. Uh, the lighting in particular was a very curious incident. You know, the blocks of lights isolating different areas could have been lifted straight out of that production and just left the set like that left those pieces in situ and just projected them onto the old Vic floor. See, I disagree there was because they've been block floor lighting before Curious Instant. Yes, dog but in I light think light. what I'm saying is that ain't nothing. But new. what I'm saying is that is nothing new. But that in the story of a 13-year-old boy who is on a journey no, I disagree is so though. similar that no, it may as well be the same thing. But Curious Incident. Now you're talking about a guy who you're seeing the eyes through someone who has is it what, autism? Is it autism? Mm -hmm. And you're you're seeing it through his eyes that's kind of how it's done this is more like boy in striped pajamas in that you're experiencing him dealing with his what his mother is going through yes, through illness. his eyes and it's very much through his eyes it doesn't nullify his story anymore just because it happens to be does it then mean that we can't see any stories now that have teenagers and if no. they do we can't put blocks on stage we've got it uh, in my opinion we've got to take this as what this is and this is a story about a young man dealing with so many issues of adolescence let alone before having to deal with loss and acceptance and anger and frustration and sadness and just being pushed from pillar to post in terms of what he knows and the people around him being taken away from it. It's just so much, in my opinion. In your opinion, whereas I like to be wowed. I want to leave a theatrical space desperate and hungry for more. I mean, seeing Curious Incident, I immediately bought the book. I hadn't the book before. I wanted to see everything that Simon Stevens had even touched. I wanted to learn more about Mary and Elliot. It left me thirsty and I just don't have a thirst for this anymore I sort of feel like I've done it and and that's just how I feel as a regard you know in regards to that you know I if I fall in love wholeheartedly with the piece I cannot get enough of it and I will ovate and I will champion and I will be the most vocal advocate of it you know and like I say if you're coming to this new and you've not experienced Curious Incident, Jane Eyre or La Strada, then you're gonna have, I think, a different experience than perhaps the one I have had. See, I, I don't always wanna be wowed. It's nice to be wowed. Sometimes I just wanna be moved. Sometimes I just wanna say, I'm opening my arms and my heart. Show me what you have. Let me in and bring you on that journey. It doesn't have to be, but it just needs to connect. Oh. And for me, this connected and took me on that journey, not in a wow way, but in a way that really drilled in deep 
it is and human. Open. Open. It's a very human, like alien, <laughs> like, an like alien. a chest, like they're yeah, one of those like bursts that's like, oh, God, God, it's showing us now, right? But, but it is a very it's, human it's story, yeah. even though it's fantastical, it has these moments of wild fantasy. It is a very, not. it is a very human story. And it, like, I could feel that it resonated with certain members of the audience, you know, and there were those that were very clearly moved by it. And there were those that were less so. I was one that was less so, you were the one that was moved. Um, let's move on to the performances yes, then, I'm, and some more elements about the production so yeah. quickly. I would say that um, the lead role of Connor needs to be strong and was played with absolute fantastic passion yeah. by Matthew Tennyson. Now we saw him in Salome. At the RSC. Uh, you, th I mean this performance was fine but it didn't really it's strike good. a chord with you did it? I mean not like this has I suppose. I mean he was very strong, he was great. Um, I think in, in the whole the, the piece uh, didn't really resonate but in this I thought it was absolutely fantastic yeah. um, completely different um, he played a young man extremely well that <laughs> angst and that anger and that frustration didn't quite get repetitive I, I thought oh is it gonna be just become shouty and no it was I, I believed it it was good also in the role of the monster Stuart Goodwin who we had seen in La Strada he's yeah. sensing a theme here um, he was Again, fantastic. I had a lot more kind of about him in this role than he did play in Zeruda or whatever the name of that character was that he played something, in the Strada. Yeah. Um, there was just something a little bit more ballsy about this performance, and I just think he had a lot more to do. Okay. But he yeah. was very good. He was good. Um, I also liked the mum. Yeah, the mum played by Marianne Oldham. She was great. I mean, she's she. I mean, she probably has the biggest journey in so it's much tricky. as she starts it's off younger and you know there's the moment of mm. that she's got a baby and then there are the fantastical moments where she's a healthy you know woman and then there's the illness and there's a lot of emotional yeah. you know really connection there very good yeah and also i know you like grandma grandma was great Selena as well Selena Cadell. she had a lovely moment at the end of the first act which, which yeah. is um just directorial and performing gold and um she did that beautifully well uh, i i loved it and it was all i, I don't want to go too much into it but i, I love that moment um, and I suppose we've got to mention the music because Lovely music. the music is featured prominently in all of Sally's work but particularly in this piece with brand new compositions by Benji Bauer and Will Bauer who are we're lucky enough to actually have playing their own compositions live on stage every night and I love that um, during the piece you see them they don't hide it somewhere where we can't see them you know we see that they are making the music they are accompanying what is going on um, as well as that also vocals from um, the company yeah. really nice vocals from them making soundscapes and singing yeah reminded me of Andrea Britton's performance in La Strada where she got to mm -hmm. sing these beautiful high operatic tones and this yeah. choral work that we've seen before in Sally Cookson's work it's like a real collation of her previous experience redigested in something new. Redigested. Um, the, the set was pretty a blank canvas, but really nice use of specific props. In this case, the ropes. Love that. You talked about lighting um, on the floor. I love the general lighting scape. Some really beautiful lighting moments in there. Yeah. Um, use of cross projection. lighting, front lighting. Um, production um, projection was okay. Yeah. It didn't blow me away the projection, but it was uh, nice to put it. It came at good moments, is what I would say. Yeah. It did amplify the emotion. Good I, sound design as well. Great I've got sound to say, design. And the, the kind of those again. The, I love those bassy sounds. You do love a bassy sound. Amplifying sounds. moments, were really good as well. Anything you want to say? No, I think we should move on to how many legs. Well, I guess you were probably wondering how many legs we are going to give our monster calls playing here at the Young Vic. We are going to give. Four. Four! Four legs! Yeah. Now, if I had my way, I'd probably give it more, but we've got to give a balance. Um, it really moved me, but obviously that's just me, and I can't speak for everybody in the audience, as I know you had a different experience. Yeah, and like I say, I think if this was totally fresh, then I might be having a different opinion. I think I would be overwhelmed by the creativity of it all, but like I say, I've seen it before. Um, whereas I think it's a fantastic, although seeing it before, it's a different story, it's a new story, new cast, new telling, and um, 
just the music is great and the way they conceive the conceptual ideas and put them on stage is great. But hey, that's just what we think. Just what I thought and what he thought. Yeah, what are, who are we? What did you think? <laughs> that's more important. Let us know down below. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, and, and thank you for that recommendation. Yeah, we definitely suggest that you come and see it and make up your own mind. I mean, yes. agree with us, disagree with us. Do you know what? That's Life is all about differences. That's what art is about. Isn't it just? You talk to us about what you you thought comment below we are the breaker leggers and we'll catch you again soon bye, bye.